Alright, so now that we've successfully set up our Firebase backend, which we saw in the last lesson, the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and initialize our Firebase database within our application and also write some data to our database in that way we can confirm and be sure that everything is working out properly and well set up for us to continue building our Uber clone application. So to be able to do that, there's a couple of things that we need to do first of all. Now we need to go back to our project overview and the first thing we need to do will be to add an application or a project to our Firebase project. I think the right way to say it is to add an application to our Firebase project. So from this place you can see add an app to get started. So you can choose to add an iOS app or an Android app or even a web application. But we are going to be starting from the Android part of things. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Android. So now, for us to register an Android app to our Firebase project, we need to provide our package name. So to get our package name, we're going to open up our Android Studio, which is more like our project. Okay, so here in Android Studio, I'm going to navigate to the Android part of things. So if I remember explaining our folder architecture properly, there are three very important folders that we have in our Flutter project. The first is the Android part of things, which is more like where all our Android files are being contained, and the iOS folder, which contains all the files related to our iOS app, and the lib folder, which contains all the um, Flutter codes that we are going to be writing most of the time in our app. So I'm very hopeful that you're already familiar with these folders. So now, for us to be able to access our Android package name, we're going to navigate to the Android folder, Inside of the app folder, I'm going to open up the build or gradle file. So inside of the build or gradle file, if we scroll down a little bit, we'll be able to see our package name. So as you can see, it's called application ID here, but it is our package name. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'm using Ctrl C to copy it and go back to Chrome and I'm going to paste it here. So the app nickname is optional and our device fingerprint is optional as well it's only required when you're using google sign-in or phone number support in authentication so we'll just skip this part for now so we're going to go ahead and click on register app all right so after registering the app the next thing we need to do will be to download the google services.json file so I'm going to click on this button to download the file. All right. Now that the file has been downloaded, the next thing we need to do is to put it in the appropriate place within our project. So Firebase made it very simple for us to point us to the right direction. So I'm going to locate the file. All right, so this is the file. So I'm going to use Ctrl C to copy it. So we should also keep in mind where we're supposed to put a Google services.json file. So it's supposed to be inside the app folder in our Android project. So I'm going to open up our Android Studio. So this is our app folder inside the Android project. So I'm going to use Ctrl V to paste the Google services.json file here. And I'm going to click OK. So this is the content of the Google services.json file. Okay, so we are done with this. Now let's return back to Firebase and continue. So I'm going to click on next. Now the next thing we need to do will be to locate our project level build.gradle file and we're going to add this line in the appropriate place. So I'm going to click on this button to copy this line of code and I'm going to return back to our Android Studio and I'm going to navigate to our project level build.gradle which is this and I'm going to look for dependency, which is this. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back up so that will confirm exactly what we're supposed to do. All right, so I'm supposed to put this under dependencies. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and paste this here. All right. Now the next thing we need to do will be to navigate to app level builder gradle. And when we get there, we need to copy this line of code and paste it there. So I'm going to navigate back again to Android Studio and we're going to go to the app level build.gradle. So this is where we are supposed to add that line of code that we just copied. Okay. 
So I'm going to use Ctrl S to save this, but this actually saves automatically. That's if you're making use of um, Android Studio. So I'm going to close out all of this. So returning back to Firebase, all I need to do is to click on Next and click on Continue. And bam! So our project has now been successfully added. Now the next thing we need to do is to install the necessary Firebase packages inside our application. So to do that, I'm going to go to a website where you can download most of the Flutter packages that you'll be needing in your application. So the website or the URL is pub.dev slash flutter slash packages. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this URL. So I'm going to search for Firebase. Okay. Now the first package I'm going to install will be the Firebase core. And the reason for this is because we are going to be using more than one Firebase package. So in scenarios where you're using more than one Firebase package, you also need to install the Firebase core. So we are going to be using the Firebase Authentication and the Firebase Database and possibly the Firebase Messaging Packages. So the Firebase Core is very necessary. So to install it, we're going to go to the Installation tab and we're going to copy this line of code, which is more like a dependency. Now we're going to navigate back to our Android Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and fold up these folders. And we're going to go into our popspec.yaml file. So this is more like a place where you install the packages that you need within your application. So here we have Cupertino icons. I'm going to jump to the next line and I'm going to go ahead and paste the code that we just copied from, from the packages website. All right, so we have Firebase core. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Firebase authentication. So it just makes sense that we install all the necessary Firebase packages all at once. Go to installation and copy this. I will paste this here. Now the next in line will be Firebase database. All right, so I'm going to copy this and paste this here. Now the next thing we need to do to successfully install these packages is to click on pop.get. So this will go ahead and neatly install the packages for us. So these packages has been successfully installed. Now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and initialize our Firebase database. So to be able to do that, it's always very necessary to run to documentation to tell us exactly what to do and point us to the right direction. So we're going to go to the examples and see how to initialize Firebase database. So from what we have here, how to initialize this is pretty much straightforward. All we need to do is to change the way our main method looks like and change a couple of things and configure our Firebase application and provide a couple of variables or a couple of information that we can find in our Google services.json file. And that will be it. Now, to ensure that we don't spend a lot of time on this, I'm going to go ahead and copy this chunk of code to this point. And I'll return to Android Studio. So inside of our main method, I'm going to go ahead and paste the code that we just copied here. All right, the already existing ROM method. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and replace this. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and import the necessary Firebase packages. Normally you can copy the packages one after the other and import them on top. But I figured out that there is a very easy way of doing that. You can just go ahead and try to retype Firebase app. So it will automatically import the package for us, which is exactly what just happened. Now the next thing we need to do to resolve this is to import that.io. So I'm going to have import that.io. Okay, so this will resolve this. So let me take a couple of moments to explain what all of these are doing. Firstly, this entire chunk of code, starting from here to here, is going to help us initialize our Firebase by calling the configure method. And the configure method requires a Firebase option. 
Now, the Firebase option takes in properties of our Firebase project. In that way, it hooks up our Firebase project with our application. All right. Now, the first thing that we are going to copy from here will be the Firebase URL. Okay. Now, let's return back to the main method. And I'm going to paste it here. So why I pasted this code here instead of this place is because we are going to be using this part for the iOS side of things. So our main focus is to fix the Android part of things. So as you can see, there is a ternary operator that checks what platform our app is running on. So if we're on iOS, so these are the properties that will be used. And on the other hand, if we are on Android, these are the properties that will be used to initialize our Firebase. So let's continue by returning to googleservices.json. We're going to copy our API key, our current API key. We're going to return to the main method. And we're going to paste it here. Now the next thing we need to do will be to copy the Google app ID. So I'm going to go here. The mobile SDK app ID is actually what we are looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it. All right. So this is basically all that we need to do to initialize our Firebase database. Now to be very sure that all of this is going to work out properly, it just makes so much sense that we write some data to our Firebase database. So to do that, I'm going to go to our main page. So what I want to do in this main page is to create a button. So when we tap on the button, it's going to send some data to our Firebase database. So I'm going to set up the body. So it is going to be a material button. The height is going to be 50. And the mean width is going to be 300. The color is going to be green. So the chart is going to take in a text widget. And the text widget is going to read test connection. So we're going to go ahead and wrap our material button inside a center widget. So to easily do this, if you're using a Mac computer, you can simply hold your options key and click the enter key to have this. But if you're on Windows, just hold your alternate key and click enter, you still get the same result. So I'm going to go ahead and select wrap with center. So now the next thing we need to do will be to supply the unpress callback. So I'm going to have unpress. All right. Now writing data to Firebase database is very simple and straightforward. We make use of something we call a database reference. So the database reference is more like a path to where we want to save the information we have in mind. So to demonstrate this properly, I'm going to go ahead and create a database reference. So this database reference is going to be equal to Firebase database instance. So with this, I'm actually referring to the instance of the Firebase database that is connected to this project. The reference, the child. Now what we need to do is to provide the path to where we want to save the information that we have in mind. So I'm going to save it to test. We can now go ahead and say dbref, which is more like a database reference, dot set. And what do we want to save? We can simply go ahead and say is connected. All right. So what we have in mind is that when we click on this material button, it will go ahead and save is connected on that test node. All right. So let's go ahead and test that out. So I just hit the play button to run our app on our Android emulator. Okay, so our app is starting. Okay, so we have a green button. So what I'm going to do will be to pull up our Firebase database. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the test connection button. And bam! So congratulations guys, we successfully connected our Firebase database to our application. Now in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and see how to do the same thing on iOS. So this will be all for now. See you in the next class.